Uh, welcome again. Um, so let's jump straight to the to the first topic, which is about user journeys. I'll use probably this tool. Uh, so I work here in in, in MSD uh, as a UX designer. If you were wondering why uh, MSD, if, if, if you know uh, what MSD does, it's a pharma company, it's quite a big company. And if you're wondering why in pharma company we're talking about front end and, and UX, it's because even big companies like MSD needs uh, better IT. So that's the reason why they set up this hub and we try to do stuff differently. Um, so that's, uh, that's about uh, the, the, the company. So really shortly about myself, uh, I'm trying to be digital, so it's on Twitter, LinkedIn, Google+, Plus, Facebook. Uh, I actually find out IFICQ as well, recently. <laughs> so uh, it's about user journeys. So when we talk about user journeys, we're talking about users, right? So let's pause it for a moment, and we talk about users, it's about user experience in general. So I'll briefly start with what user experience is and what it isn't. If you can't hear me, just shout on me and I'll increase my voice. So about UX in, in, in general, currently you've, you've probably seen you either design UX designers, UI designers, or if you've seen uh, advertisements that a lot of companies are looking for UX designers. The issue is that just a few of them, they know what UX really is, because UX, the user experience, it's, it's, it's kind of a hype uh, nowadays. And it's, uh, the term is misused quite often in, in business and in designers' community some kind of a bubble that everyone is using. Um, the thing is that UX, as, as a term, is, is quite strictly specified discipline with, with their rules and, and processes. So let's, let's look at what UX, what we see as, as UX, what's kind of a, the umbrella of, of UX, what's behind that. Uh, it's not just a user interface. Uh, it's about emotions in, in general. When talking about the experience, the experience you're getting by using a product or website service, there are emotions, there should be emotions. UI. So if you see a UI slash UX designer, I disagree with this term. I, I don't know what that means because UI is subset of, of UX. It's part of it. So if you, you can be a UX designer or you can be a UI designer, you can be a UX designer that does UI, it's fine, but the slash thing, for me, that indicates that the company is not sure what the difference is. UX is about iterations as well. If you don't do iterations, if you, don't, if you do a design, if you do an interface and then you ship it and then it's done, then it's not UX, then you can't be a UX designer because UX is about users to find out what they need, how they think, their mental models, and for this, you can't do it on the first round. It's almost impossible. So it's all iterations as well. It's all information architecture. If you don't know what that is, if you don't know the shortcut, uh, imagine a large menu where you have a lot of uh, items that you can click on. The information architecture it specifies if they if they understand it, what goes where, and so on. It's really the architecture of the of the interface. Visual design um, again quite. Uh, misused visual design is, is related to the emotions it's about the colors it's about how um, you interpret different colors uh, how, how the experience of of the look and feel what that is if it's for a bank or if it's for a startup it's really the, the visual design and something really large it's all target audience in general Talking about UX, we must talk about target audience. If we don't know what the target audience is, what the product uh, will be used by, who will use the product or service, then we can't talk about user experience, right? And we're talking about maybe UI, but not a UX. So target audience, and, and the reason for this, because the users, the target audience, they have some specific needs that we need to find out as UX designers or researchers. And when we know the needs, then we can have a product for that. It can't be the other way around. You can have a product and find the users. It's not usually a very efficient way. If there's a need and you build on that and you really understand the target audience, you increase the chance that your website or a product will be much more successful. It's also about with feedback, feedback, iterations. That's also very important. And personas. Uh, 
I'm not really a big fan of personas uh, because it's it's difficult uh, to keep them up to date, but that's a different topic. And user journeys. So this is why uh, this first uh, presentation about user journeys and KPIs. So those two topics we will look at uh, during the first presentation. So we will not cover UX. It will take a little longer, but just those two. So, quick question. Who of you has a website? Majority? Half, let's say. Who of you coded or did the website? Okay, cool. Um, for those who raised their hands, do you measure your goals and success, whatever that means for you? Do you measure in general? Who does measure and who doesn't? Okay, for those who doesn't measure, uh, this might be for you, even for, for you who, do, who, who does, maybe we'll extend it. So, user journeys. Let's, let's get to the, to the topic. What is a user journey? Uh, maybe last question, uh, not really, but who have heard the user journey before? Okay, have you used it? Okay, fine. So we will we will look at that. Uh, why uh, I think having a user journey in general is really important, and how it can help your business or your your product. So throughout the presentation, I'll use one example uh, to demonstrate what user journey is. This is from the website uh, msdit.cz. If you look at that, uh, let's imagine there is one goal that people who visit the website, they will find that there's an interesting job and maybe they would like to work for MSD. So we can uh, visualize this journey by those uh, simple boxes. At the beginning, there's a home page, And then as you navigate through the pages, at the end, you click on the apply button, which can be taken as, uh, as a journey. Uh, you can imagine this uh, as an, uh, another example um, on eBay, for example. If you put, you're looking for a new digital camera. So you go to eBay, you search, you find that, then you check the details, maybe, and then you add it to the basket and you pay. This can be like a limited user journey. Or it can be a registration to a newsletter. It really depends on what the goals are. Um, so at this stage, I would be interested for you, for those who said they have their own websites um, and you said you, you measure, I would be interested in what do you measure? Just show it on me. Contact. What's that? Contact. Contact? What, what do you mean by that? If, uh, if I'm talking about my personal webs website, then mm -hmm. I measure uh, when someone emails me or phones me. Okay, cool. Anything else? Page visits. Page visits, yeah, it's a good and one. Demographics, like mm -hmm. where people are from. Okay, cool. Goals. What's that? Goals. Goals. What kind of goals? Like filling uh, forms, mm -hmm. for example. Yeah, okay, cool. So, all those examples then definitely can be measured on that. You can extend it to conversion rate, you can, do a, you can measure a lot of stuff. Um, so, if we may imagine this, Let's just pause it for a moment and let's say that the, the visitors, when they buy something on eBay or they click on this apply button, that there's something after that. Let's look at that, what's, what's happening after. So in our case, it's just extending the journey. In our case, when you click the apply button, it goes to a database called Taleo. And then you receive an email, you receive a confirmation email. And then um, after that, we'll meet you. Um, and if, if it fits together, then we'll be happily uh, welcome you on, on board through our re recruiters. So this is the second part, what happens then. Uh, you did some, some examples. You, a lot of you have, has a website. Can you tell me what do you think that your users does after that in your specific examples? A 
anything. If you have a website, do you know what they, or you can guess, can you guess what they do when they leave your website, for example? Hmm? Forget about it. They might forget <laughs> about it, yes. I'm not sure if that's a, it's a goal. Uh huh, okay. Cool. If they like it, yes, they must share that. What else? Go to a similar website. Yes, they can compare, definitely. So the reason why I'm asking is to think that it doesn't stop with the website. That there are a lot of steps related to your website that you should think about. What happens then? Because it can influence your, your design, but we'll get to that uh, later on. So now we, we saw what happens on the website and what happens after. There could be something before, before they visit your website. Well, then. well yes. So in, in our case, um, as this example, uh, you meet uh, us, you meet recruiters on a, on a conference. They have a stand, you talk to them, let's say you're excited, or they can offer you, but you don't get a business card. So you just remember MSD and that's it. So you go home and you put it into Google, you get some results, and if it, everything goes well, you end up on the website and the story continues. So in your examples, again, thank you for sharing the previous ones, what do you think the users does before they visit your website? Click on a link. How do they find the link? On LinkedIn. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Any other examples? They search, searching for information. Mm -hmm. And how do they know about what, what to put in the Google search? They have a need to find information. For what's, a what's that? They have a need to find information for a person. Okay. They're looking for a designer. Yeah, okay. So they have the need to maybe change job, for example. And they they want to find out uh, what offers are at the market. Yeah. Yeah. Good examples. So let's zoom out, which I'll do now. And this is the whole user journey. It's not very uh, detailed, but it doesn't. Um, it doesn't stop with the with the green column. This is what usually people describe. They are talking about user journeys and measuring the goals. So my point here, you should really think what happens after that, how they think, what they do, um, and what happens before. The reason for for this, uh, why we believe it's it's really important, is is really the KPI. Uh, who doesn't know what KPI is? Okay, so majority of you knows KPIs, which is great. KPI is Key Performance Indicator. That's a metric to find out if your website service or a product is successful. So it's a Key Performance Indicator. Everything, all the interactions, we believe should be measured. If you add a feature to your website, there should be a reason behind that. And if there's a reason, you should know if if your decision to make it red, to make it big, to make it, I don't know, three columns, if it's successful or not. So it, this, this helps with the, with the KPIs. So let's make uh, an example. The, the reason for our website, it could be, as an example really, I, I made it up, that our recruiters, they needed two UX designers, right? So they needed the two UX designers here, at the end. Yeah, and the reason it could be one of the one of the tools to to fulfill this need, it could, it could be a website. There can be different uh, options for this. But let's imagine they chose a website um, that through the website they will find uh, two designers. And the thing is that if you have this need, you go backwards, and it creates the whole ecosystem about the KPIs. So let's let's see what really happens during this journey. We will measure the whole user journey, so we'll have some quantitative data, and we'll see what really happens. What, what's the reason why I'm showing you this? 
At the very beginning, you have a lot of conversations. Everything goes well. Recruiters meet a lot of people. And let's say a lot of people, they visit the website. That means they got really excited. They visit the website. They were successful in the search because it's optimized for good keywords and so on. And still, let's say 60% of that, it's a, it's a made up number, but let's say 60%, they will click the apply button. Now you may think the site is really successful because 60%, that is amazing, right? If we measured just the visitors, that would be maybe amazing. Let's say we have 100 uh, visitors a day on the website. We still don't know if it's good or bad. We just don't know. We don't. We know the number because there are no KPIs. But as it goes, we find out that only 50% got the confirmation email. So uh, in this example, let's imagine you try to find the bug. What's happening in there? And you find out that there's no technical issue, right? You really, when you register, when you apply, you, you put all the details, you do receive the email. So you don't know what happens. And if we go uh, further, then this is a recruiting process, probably working uh, everywhere in the world, that just some, some people uh, got hired through that. And quick pause for the KPIs. You can have a KPI that you need to recruit two designers uh, because X. Fine, let's use this tool. But you can have a better KPIs. For example, you want to find two, rec two UX designers that will stay in the company for at least a year. Which is interesting, right? Because the thing with KPIs is that you can cheat really easily on that. If you don't set up the KPIs properly, if you don't add enough details, that you can cheat. Um, I'll, I'll get I'll get to this. So now we know that the website uh, is is amazing. It works. It's it's optimized for the keywords. But the recruiters are still not happy because they don't get those two UX designers, and they're asking why. So um, you put a a lot of money into the website, a lot of effort, but still the KPI is not fulfilled. So that's why. If you measure the whole journey, you see that there's a huge drop. You get a lot of conversations, a lot of people are getting to the website, and there's a huge drop, and people don't get, they don't receive the confirmation emails. So this is quantitative data through Google Analytics or any tool. So you go to the, to the people you hired or you didn't hire, and you ask them what happened. And then you find out that in the system, this Taleo that is made in 19th century, that it's really cumbersome. There are 50 text fields. It, it doesn't work on mobile. It's, it's really slow. So people just give up, right? And that's the point. If you, th if you were thinking that the website is cool and you still don't get to those two designers, maybe you will invest a lot of money to the website, do A-B testing, optimize it, do better speed. But maybe the problem is somewhere else. And before this user journey, you wouldn't know. You'll be focusing purely on the website and thinking what we do wrong, but the website is okay. So, really quickly, process. This is really for you. Please think about the whole process, what's happening before, during and after. Think about that. If you don't know, ask why. Always ask why. For UX designers, this is like the word number one. If you keep asking why, you can't make usually a mistake. Uh, ask why, why this product, why this feature, why you need that. And if you don't get an answer, then maybe you can challenge that, right? And if you do get an answer, it can help you to, good, to make uh, good decisions. Vanity. Um, when we are talking about number of visitors, if I was you, I would, if you don't know what vanity metric is, just write it down or Google it, this is super important. Vanity metric is something, is a metric that doesn't make sense. It's like number of visitors. It doesn't tell you if you're successful or not. If you, if you know that you have 100 visitors a day, what does it tell you? And let's say you, you, you set up your KPI to 1,000 users a day. 
Okay, sounds great. So, you, but you can cheat, like I said. You can put trillion check rounds to a marketing campaign. You can boost PPC and you'll get thousand visitors. But does it really tell you that your website is successful? Probably not. You cheat it, right? I'm not saying it's, it's, it's useless, but it's cheat on your KPIs. So vanity metric, like number of visitors, it doesn't tell you anything about quality of your product. Um, another example uh, about the, 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 the vanity and user journeys. If you're for, let's say you have a e-commerce website and you're selling digital cameras and you track your good conversion rate and people are buying those cameras, they're happy. You get, um, you get a lot of uh, inquiries and you sell a lo lot of cameras and you think, okay, good KPI. I know my website is great because I tested it. But if you don't measure the whole user journey, you, you don't, maybe if it's your website, you will find out. But if you're part of a big company, you might find out that 90% of the customers, they return the goods, right? Because they're not happy with it. So the user experience as a whole is ruined at that moment. Website is great, but they'll probably won't shop at your site never again. So really, next time. Uh, I do recommend to draw the user journey as a whole, even if you guess. You can guess, you can validate it later, but do it, right? If you want to achieve something with your product, it can be physical, it can be digital, anything. Just draw the whole user <coughs> journey. How they find out what happens then after they leave um, the product. This is what I said, uh, always get answers to why and where. Where do they start? Where do they go? Where do they finish? Why I need to do this? How does it help me? Uh, why we cannot postpone it? Why is it important? Why it costs so much money? And so on. Why? It's, that's really important. And by that, Eunice sounds like a cliche. I mean, apply the previous two steps in your daily jobs. Right? If you know why, you can help. If you're part of a product team or a big company, by asking those questions like why and understanding the whole journey, you can help the whole team to understand them, why they do what they do. Um, this is a book I recommend uh, to read. Uh, if you don't know it, uh, this is really my one number one recommendation for everyone who would like to uh, read more about how it works with the KPI, how it works with the build, measure, learn, iterations, and so on. Lean Startup, there's a Lean UX as well. And that's it, thank you very much. <laughs>